came here to do one thing, and that was to bring her home. And that's what we did. If I pull the license plate off of Cashel's, I'm tampering with evidence and I'll get arrested. Would y'all bail me out? I might leave you there for a day so I have some peace and quiet. But then I'll come get you. What was the license plate? ERC 746. Tip. Cashel was seen on camera going into the Great Lawn parking lot. Her vehicle never left the waterfront area. It's not on camera anywhere. Her OnStar is still putting her near the footbridge over in that area. Um, her dad walked for days, um, hours each day, and you know, just to see if he could find anything. He did find a few areas where you know some branches were broken over, or there were some skid marks right at the edge of the water. We are primarily going to focus downtown um, near Joe's Crab Shack in that area. Uh, we're 64 and I believe it's 65 crossover. So we're going off of OnStar, uh, Louisville Metro Police Department cameras. Um, again, they saw her coming into that area, never saw her leave, and her vehicle is still pinging over there. All right, guys, today we are on the Ohio River in Louisville, Kentucky, searching for a Cashel Moore. Cashel Moore has been missing for the past 15 days. Um, we're at Cox Boat Ramp right now. Lindsay was putting the RV up and when I was floating back, I had the sonars on. There's already two vehicles in here. Um, we're gonna have Mike McFerrin come and dive. Uh, I just wanna show you the vehicles so far that we have found. Um, I doubt they're the car we're looking for right now um, because they're cars. We are looking for a Ford Edge uh, I'm not for sure what color it is. It's a black Ford Edge. You know, I was expecting to find a lot of cars. It's Louisville, Kentucky. I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff goes on here. Um, we're about to cross over the first car. I said three. I thought that was a car, but that was a, a log. Uh, Now, Cashel, she is 18 years old. There's the first car, right there. And I think there's another one just coming up. Uh, I might have backed up and thought it was two. So, we'll just gonna check it out real quick because I never did make a solid run through there. It's right there. Yeah, there's another vehicle right there and right there. Now those look a little older of vehicles, so it's not something we're, we are concerned about. Uh, we will dive it, um, and uh, we'll get the license plates off of it, but right now we are searching for the SUV of Cashel's. We're going to get this party started. Uh, we're going to run down real quick and get over there and make sure we do our due diligence on searching. There are a lot of barges here. Uh, there's another vehicle right there, Lindsay. That's a. That looks like an SUV. There's another one. There's two more right there. Oh, it's upside down, isn't it? Yeah, there's two more. So there's four vehicles in this area right here alone. So that's crazy. But they look like they've been here for a little while. So we're gonna get past these barges and head on down and center still no vehicle yet this little like triangle of grass right here is 
first one is Harbor Lawn. Uh, and then there's the inlet, and then it's Great Lawn, and straight back there is where we had parked earlier. This is where I see that what looked like. Pull that up. It's all nasty and muddy right there. Alright, so. We are at the area, this this wasn't the area where they thought she went in, right? Yes. This is where the area she thought, oh, there it is right there. Yep, I see that now. That's it, isn't it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Let's see it's 100% it. Right there. Or okay. right there. There's two of them. I'm going to mark this. If I mark that one, then I'll have both of them. So. Yeah, there's two of them. That one's upside down, that one's on its top. Uh, if you want to get the live scope out, we'll go back over that after we come down through here. So we parked back there. Yeah. Um, but they saw her car. Louisville Metro Police Department has her car on camera coming in to the waterfront park area. And from what I understand, they have her parking in the Great Lawn area because each one of these little sections on this waterfront park have like Great Lawn, Harbor Lawn, like they all have a different name. Um, they have her coming in, but they never have her car leaving. I don't know if the family's now aware of what was said on the 911 call, that's something we'll have to ask them. I'm, uh, I'm going to tell you that those two vehicles right there... One of those is the, I think it's the first one. There, there's, there's two SUVs there. Uh, they're larger vehicles. Let, let, let's just say they're larger vehicles. Let's just be optimistic here. They're larger vehicles. The possibility of them being one of them being that she never came out. Um, her vehicle is about 15 and a half feet in length. Okay. Double check, but I want to say it was that's just over six feet wide. With the Ford Edge, so there is a ledge here, so we'll have to go. You see how that ledge comes out? We'll have to veer off and go behind that ledge to, uh, to check to see if there's any more vehicles. Uh, so we have Mike McFerrin going to be coming out here tomorrow and uh, definitely going to dive these. And then we'll put the live scope down onto the uh, onto those vehicles and see if we can determine if we can determine what type of vehicles they are. So what we're going to do is we know those two vehicles are there. Those two are very prime objects to dive on. The furthest one is a bigger car, bigger vehicle, more than likely hers. 
but I want to keep continuing to go down to make sure there's no other vehicles around this area because of what the person was saying. Uh, I'm not for sure exactly who said this, but they said they were on the phone chasing it for 10 minutes. So I, I don't know exactly what that was all about um, going southbound West. or westbound. So, I mean, with the current. So we're going to continue to search further down. And then when Mike gets here tomorrow, we're going to dive on those objects. I am sick. Um, coughing my head off, congestion. I don't want to take the chance of blowing my eardrums out. <coughs> hey, Mike. Uh, we found uh, we found two vehicles. The one on the back side is, I'm going to say, by the looks of everything, by the looks of the shadow, I'm pretty sure it's her car. Looks like a newer vehicle. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's her. Size-wise. Pretty sure it's side -wise, size wise, shadow wise. It looks like an SUV top. You know the back side of it because it's upside down. Um, the Ford edges have a, a round back. So we're just looking at that. Also, what is the name of your uh, dive company? Like the Mid Missouri Sheriff's Dive Team or like yeah, Scoop Adventure? I can't dive and, and I know I can't dive. My ears are on. My ears. What kind of depth and current are you looking at? Uh, you're looking at probably one or two knots. On the wide scope? And about 18, 18 feet. So, um, super calm, super calm river right now. Yeah. Even with the barges, we're out of barge traffic. Yeah, we're out of barge traffic. Um, I don't think Excellent. you're, I, I don't we're, really think you're going to have too much of, a, of an issue on this dive. 20, 30 yards from shore. I, I may be wrong. It may be three knots, but it is nothing. Like, I turn my motor off and I'm, I'm barely going. Okay. So, yeah, not a big deal. Yeah, not not a big deal at all. Like, what we'll do is we'll mark them. I'll park the boat on the side, and then you just dive from the dive from the shore. They're that close, so you won't. Yeah, 20, 30 yards from shore. Yeah, 20, 30 yards from the shore. So. We just can't park in the night Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Like, you won't go under unless we have a secure line. To, the, to it. I mean, you're not just gonna dive blind. Uh, what you're gonna you're gonna dive blind, but you're not gonna dive rope blind. Exactly. So, so we'll, uh, we'll we're gonna continue on down and see if we see any other vehicles. But for right now, I'm gonna tell you that these are probably one of the two are in. Current situation. Family's all here. Obviously, you guys know that they've been following us down through there and watching a sonar we found what we believe could possibly be the vehicle now I'm not saying it is I'm saying it isn't from our experience it's a newer vehicle we think um, I'm under the scrutiny right now of if I dive on this and I pull a license plate off they're saying I'm tampering with evidence um, in the past 200 vehicles that I have pulled a license plate off of Nobody's had an issue. Um, eh, maybe a regulation, maybe a law, but it's never been pushed. Now they're saying, if I were to dive down, pull the lights plate off because I can't see in this water. And look, we're going less than almost two miles an hour. We're going two and a half miles an hour. I'm just sitting here. This water is not raging. This is diveable. Is off the channel. I do know that you're not supposed to dive the channel where the barges come through. That's a safety issue. I understand that. Uh, will you get in trouble with it? I don't know. Maybe. But these cars that we found, there's four or six up there at the other boat ramp that I told the, the, the sergeant about. I, I can't remember his name, and I'm not going to throw his name out there. It was a sergeant. Um, I still can't remember his name. Anyway, and then... The vehicles that we found over here matched the description to my knowledge. He says it's out in the channel. I haven't seen anything out in the channel so far. I could be wrong. They said they followed it. They know where it's at. It was too dangerous for them to dive. Now it's not dangerous. Why aren't they diving it? I called them. I told them. I said, hey, 
It's almost like a lake out here right now. Like right now, there's hardly no current. A new diver could dive this. I am, I don't know what to do. I've never had this issue. Uh, we usually find the vehicle, we'll, we'll pull it. Um, but when we pulled in today, another officer came up because there was a shooting in the city here, but they seen our dive tank, so they came over to talk to me. And they said, hey, you know, do you have a card? So I gave him a card. From there, he was going to give it to the dive sergeant or the captain of the dive team, whatever. And, uh, you know, we'll see what we can work out. Right now, nothing's being worked out. They're saying that if I pull the license plate off of Cashel's, I'm tampering with evidence and I'll get arrested, basically. And if I go past this yellow bridge that has no signs, then I get a $5,000 <coughs> fine. All these other vehicles over here, if I pull a license plate on them, and they're, they've got somebody in it, I'm breaking the law. No, he told you you could touch those. Yeah, he told me I could touch those. He can't stop me from diving. But if we pull the, if, if we pull the right license plate, we're going to jail. Tampering with evidence. I guess we just take that chance. I'll go to jail for somebody. It'll be the first time I get to go to jail. Would y'all bail me out? I might leave you there for a day so I have some peace and quiet. But then I'll come get you. We're here for the family. We're not here for them. We will work close with them. And we will work with them. But as it's sitting right now, they're wanting us to work against them and I don't want to do that so I want to make sure that we're kosher with them and if we have to push the issue to get them out here to dive this you know you can't put a diver in danger I understand that but there's no danger here all right guys it's the next day um, we're gonna go to the spot where Mike McFerrin back here is gonna be diving on the two potential vehicles um, since the law enforcement told me I couldn't pull the plates, um, or we couldn't pull the plates due to the fact that I have, um, congestion and I can't dive, he came out five hours away, five and a half hours away. He's from, uh, Scuba Adventures, right? Scuba Adventures in Jefferson City, Missouri. In Jefferson City, Missouri. Check him out. If you got some dive gear you need to get or you need some training, check him out. Um, so yeah, we're going to go over there. There is some identifying objects on the car. There's a strap. Identifying? Uh, is that a word? Identifying. Identifying. <laughs> what was that other word? Dramatically. Dramatically, it's a word. <laughs> so anyway, um, so there's some big identifiers on there. He's gonna feel the hood, and if he feels those straps, he's gonna come up, and, and that's the car, so. Basically, we're doing the law enforcement a favor, and uh, more so bringing a, a family member home that needs to come home so we got Lindsay over here she's fiddling around with something Sometimes. we'll see you guys here in a little bit he's gonna dive on it I appreciate you coming out Mike no problem guys I want to I want to point something out here don't do that don't be that guy don't be that guy just don't, just don't do it at least stay at five to ten feet away from the Shoreline, just, just don't do that. That's dangerous. There's slick mud, you could slide in. Your car could jump out of gear. Just don't Large do it. could come through, throw a heck of a wake up. Throw yeah. a heck of a wave up, just don't do it. Like, get it back from it. Like, I don't care if you sit there at the boat ramp, that's fine. But don't get that close. That dude's tire is touching the water. Or girl, I don't know, but regardless, don't be that guy. Or girl, don't be that person. Why don't you do that? Why don't you get up here in the front deck? 
it's an easier way to do it when the uh, sonar's on a down scan because you'll be able to see it better. All right, drop your magnet down so we can see it. Uh, you should be on the car right now. I've ever seen. Is it not on there? Come closer to hear her. I think I might. I think I'm on it now. Yeah, I'm on it. Now guys, safety is our number one priority. If Mike felt uncomfortable, he wouldn't take this dive. He is a very good diver. He's a solo diver. We're all solo divers in this. Um, the conditions are perfect to dive. Am I right? Other than no vis? Other than no vis. Like, it's not bad current. No, not at all. So, he's gonna, he's gonna go ahead and get ready. No barges, you're good, sir. He's down, just like that. Again. I'm not perfect. I'm not. I'm not saying this is her car. I'm saying we just gotta check it, you know. So just please, if it isn't, you know, don't. Man, he's been down there for a while. Is he still on it? Uh, yeah. Just a tug. He's up. Here. I got you. Take a deep breath. Oh, don't pull on that yet. I don't have a hold of it. Well, I went down there and it was exactly as you guys described it. It was a SUV type vehicle. It was, I could tell just by touching the paint, it was a newer vehicle. It hasn't been down there long. It was on its top side. I did my original assessment, analysis, assessment of the vehicle, realized all the windows were up. Uh, tried to get a, little, a read on the license plate with the visibility that we had down there. That was impossible. Uh, I, I looked for the strap on the hood that was told to us by the families, and I couldn't. I couldn't find that. Uh, I eventually, I eventually got enough vis where I could read the license plate and realize that it wasn't the right one. So that and uh, a, a Nissan. Nissan Murano is what it was. Um, if you look up a Nissan Murano, I'll put a picture up here. It looks just like Ford. Very similar to the vehicle we are in looking for. So, I mean, that just tells me that we, we have an idea of what we're, I mean, we're, how do I say that? We're dialed in. We're dialed in. Yes. We're also dialed in on the other car. There's no current here now. This is gonna be an easy dive for you. Yeah. They closed the current. They closed the gates this, again. This current is terrible. It's ferocious. I'm saying we're we're still Go 45 front. feet yep. from the car. And I have it. It's not even in drive. It, we're just sitting here. I'm saying we haven't moved. You want to just right. latch onto it with a boat and dive off the boat? It up. I see your magnet. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. All right. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. You're going to be hitting it here shortly. You should be bumping something. You're going to lift it up and over. He's got to be. Here's his line. There you go. Okay. 
I was say, it's gotta be right here. I just saw your line and the car. Jacob, it looks like the back is open. Yep, got it now. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it's on it. Okay. You want to tighten up the bag and we just dive off of it right here? Yeah. Okay. So we'll just stuff all of this excess rope into this bag real quick. Fibers down. Fibers on the car. Driver's still on the vehicle. Yeah, coming, up. coming up. He's up. What was the license plate? ERC Sun Forces. Tip. Give you guys a quick update while we're waiting here. Um, the police officer is here. They are going to call the dive team in and uh, we're going to get this removed. So it's because of you guys that we're able to do this. I love each and every one of you. Um, you know, we're, we're going to be here till the end like we always are for the family. This is for the family. You know, whatever comes out of this, this is for the family. I don't care about myself. Like, this is the way it should be. Everybody should work together. Everybody should do their due diligence and um, bring a family member home. That's why you guys support us. Because we're here with what we're gonna do, okay? We have located Michelle Mo Moore's vehicle. Um, we have made contact with Louisville Metro Police Department. They are on scene. Um, the family was on scene with us when we located it, so we were able to tell them in person right away that we had located her, or located her vehicle at this point. Um, a huge thank you to Mike from Scuba Adventures for coming out, diving with us, spending the time with us, you know, taking, you know, four and a half, five hour trip just to help us. So we appreciate him. Um, you know, thank you to the family for allowing us to be a part of this. Thank you for allowing us to help you, for trusting us and finding, you know, and, and your daughter, your sister here, your loved one. So thank you for that. Um, that's something that we will forever be grateful for. And of course, thank you to all of the people who have helped us get to where we are today. Each and every one of you 
who watches, bikes, shares, whether you can donate or not, each one of you means more to us than you could ever realize. So thank you for that. Uh, we are about to head back down uh, to the area, um, you know, get filled in on what's going on. We had to run back over here to the boat ramp where all of our stuff and all of our gear is located. Um, so we're heading back down there. Um, the uh, I'm not sure if he's the dive commander or not, but um, the representative for the dive team that came down um, had let us know that you know they are going to get a diver in the water. They're going to confirm what we've told them as far as how the vehicle is located, um, you know, the situation under the water. Um, and then from there, uh, if the diver feels uncomfortable, they'll pull that diver out. I can't imagine that that will happen. I mean, we're, we're floating right now. We're basically sitting still in the Ohio River. It's not going to get much better than this unless by some miracle there was all of a sudden visibility. That's about all that could make this better. So. Um, you know, I have a lot of a lot of faith in them that they're going to be able to get in, um, you know, get the contents of the vehicle, everything secure, get this vehicle out, so that way when her family goes to bed tonight, they know exactly where she is and they don't have to come to the waterfront tomorrow with bad memories. So um, we're going to head back down there, see how how everything's going, you know, where we are in the process of getting the vehicle removed. So thank you to all of you. Appreciate you coming out and doing what you did, man. Absolutely, anytime, man. All right, Mike, you uh, you have a nice evening, buddy. You Are guys you as well. Yep. Yeah, I think so. I'm gonna try to make it back to Jeff by okay. tonight. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll see you this week anyway, so. Yeah, absolutely. I'll Thanks. See you guys down in Washington. Thanks again for your help. I got oh, anytime, man. Anytime. Got an hour and a half drive back. All right, guys, so vehicles coming up. Oh my God, they didn't close the gate. That's the headliner. The headliner just come out. But, uh, just be proud of each and every one of you because this is because of you guys. We're able to do this. It's a bittersweet moment, but at least the family has answers. It's been a long day, the family has answers. We came here to do one thing and that was to bring her home. And that's what we did. Love each and every one of you. Keep diving, it's not word of the stop. If you guys feel it in your heart to want to support the channel, check out chaosdivers.com. You can find out how to do that. If not, just continue to watch, support and share we love each and every one of you. Keep diving somewhere to stop. So unfortunately, we found out that Cashel Moore was not in the vehicle when, we were extra when they extracted the vehicle out of the Ohio River. Today, we're downstream searching with the drones and we're walking the pass downstream of, of where her vehicle was put, was, was found. If you guys have drones, if you guys can and walk the pass of this river, all the way down to Indiana. Um, just keep an eye out. Um, Y'all boaters that are catfishing, keep your eye out on the shorelines. It was 20 foot higher than what it is now. Um, it was like 40 foot, now it's like 20-ish feet.
while we were searching through here, guys, started getting a really strong smell. And it's a smell we're very familiar with. I wanna shimmy across this log and hopefully it'll hold my big butt. And uh, I wanna go up in here. The wind's blowing this way, so I'm gonna go a little further over that direction. I keep smelling something really strong, so we'll see how acrobatic I still am. I made it. Technically, I cheated, but I made it, right? It was entertaining to say the least. Well, that was very funny. I wasn't laughing. I didn't want, if you step in that, you sink, like uh, Keith did a while ago. All right, Lindsay, I'll be back. All right. Still recording. Your dad can't be mad at me, because I'm doing this. You're not. Yeah, you left me on the boat alone in the Ohio River. You're not going to get out of my sight. I'm saying I'm on the boat alone. I can float away. You're tied to a tree. You let me tie the knot, dummy. <laughs> oh, boy. Whew, I got that one. There's nothing here. Um, the smell we're smelling is the sewage that drains out from this drain over here. So at first we thought... <coughs> There's a rolled up tarp over there that that's where the smell was coming from, but it wasn't. So I walked all the way down through there. There's nothing over there, but we're going to start heading back up on the other side. We located, there's four vehicles at a boat ramp where we put in at Cox's Park. Um, and then there were the two vehicles that we found down in front of Great Lawn, which is where they knew her vehicle to go in the water. Fortunately, I think there was some miscommunication between the different departments. Uh, you know, the, the detective was thinking that the river patrol was out searching, um, but I don't think maybe river patrol was able to get out and search. Uh, I know that, you know, the family was on the water one day uh, for, for several hours, all day, sun up, sun down, um, and they called to check in on the status of, of her disappearance. Um, and the detective at that time had told them that river patrol had been out searching that whole day, um, but they had not. Uh, so I think there was maybe, you know, some miscommunication um, when they actually were able to get out and search. Again, the water was high at the time. It's gone down a ton since her disappearance, but um, I think um, in a bigger city, you know, I think there was some miscommunication or misunderstandings between the departments. You know, uh, Louisville Metro Police Department said that they knew where the vehicle was at, uh, but they just weren't able to get to it at the time due to you know, the water, the river being up, the storms and stuff that had come through. Um, I think that they thought that she was much farther out in the channel than she originally was. Um, you know, so in Mike diving that um, and pulling up those plates and, and seeing that plate, you know, Mike and Jacob and I all finding out at the same time, uh, because of visibility Mike wasn't able to see, but you know, all finding out at the same time that it, that it was her car, you know, and then telling her family, you know, we found the car. On sonar, we could see that the back hatch was open. Um, you know, when Mike dove down, he said, yes, it is open. Mike was able to move the hatch freely because he was able to pull the plate off of it and it was moving freely at that time. But with us not necessarily, you know, we're not able to, to change anything in the underwater seat besides take the plate. Um, so not being able to change the underwater scene, Mike left the hatch open. He did not enter the vehicle. Um, that's something that we can't do. But Mike was able to move that hatch freely. Unfortunately, from the time that Mike dove, um, it was approximately three or four hours until the divers came. Um, apparently, something had gotten wedged in in the car, some kind of debris or something, where they said they were unable to close the back hatch. Um, I'm not sure what came down the river or something, but they said they were not able to close it. Um, or, you know, I, I don't know if they were able to strap it down or if they tried or, uh, you know. So in those couple of hours, something did get wedged in there. They said they weren't able to close that hatch. So when we removed the vehicle, um, the hatch, you know, we saw the hatch open. It, it reached the water surface first. But again, unfortunately, Mo was not in the vehicle. 
I do not believe, and I think Jake was under the same understanding, that she was not in the vehicle, whether the hatch was closed or not, um, she wasn't in there at the time that they began to pull the vehicle. Um, I believe that she possibly floated out prior to that. Um, there's also the, a huge possibility that when she hit the water, you know, the back hatch didn't necessarily open, but or if it did open, she tried to get out, but unfortunately she couldn't swim. Uh, with the river being up so high and the current going so fast, it would have been hard for even an excellent strong swimmer to get to get out of that. The Louisville Metro Police, um, they were they were cordial, you know, they, they did say thank you. Um, but other than that, we really didn't speak. Um, you know, they got information from Mike as he was the initial diver on what to expect when they got down there, that type of thing. Um, they've had a lot of things going on in the city past past week. Um, Monday alone was, was horrendous for the city of Louisville. So, um, you know, in this not being necessarily a rescue at this point, I think that it had kind of gotten pushed off. Um, again, it's unfortunate for the family. It was heartbreaking yesterday. Uh, yesterday was probably one of the worst days that I have ever experienced in doing this job. I know I've only been doing it for a couple of years, but it's probably the worst day. Um, you know, we told the family we found their loved one, or we found the vehicle. Uh, you know, we said, you know, we found the vehicle, this is hers. Um, and then it felt like we stripped that all away from them. Um, that was, it was to the point where like I was ready to walk away yesterday. So we want to make sure that we are doing everything we can. We did see the Coast Guard out this morning on our way to our first location at Lannett Park. They were out um, searching the waterways. The family saw them out. Um, after, I'm not sure where the county line is, but uh, Louisville Metro Police Department and their River Patrol can't go past the county line. So after that, it's up to uh, Coast Guard. So we did see them out you know, this morning. That was promising. You know, I think it, it helped the family a little bit to know that somebody is still out helping, still searching. Um, you know, and we want to try to do our part in continuing the search. Um, so we do have the sonars on. It is extremely difficult to find the remains of somebody when they're not in a vehicle. Um, again, like Jacob said, scouring the the shoreline. You know, the family knows. You know what they're looking for they they walked for miles this morning um, I'm not sure how many but miles <laughs> so we're just gonna keep searching this area um, we do have to head home today um, we've got some family things that we that we both have to take care of so um, but that doesn't mean we won't be back and that doesn't mean that we won't follow up with this case um, again like Jacob said if anybody has any resources that are available to the family reach out to us we'll get you in contact with with Mo's family, we'll get you in contact with the uh, Louisville Metro Police Department if they're able to, you know, to speak with you if they, if they have the time. Uh, but we will definitely get you in contact with the family and, and help them get any kind of additional resources and assistance. So.